So what's the basis for risk tolerance? It's because we are looking for a benefit. So for a certain benefit, we're willing to take a certain risk. There's no such thing as zero risk in this world. We all take risks daily. I mean, normally, when we, if we travel to work, we get in the car. We know that the statistics for dying in a car accident in the US are very high uh, versus getting on a plane, which is much lower. But there's always an element of risk. And so how much risk are we willing to take on versus the benefits? So there's a trade-off for that. And some companies are more risk-averse than others. So in other words, they, they want to minimize the risk as much as possible. Others are willing to take on more risk because of the benefits. And here again, when you look at the, the accidents in the last 10 years or so, the majority of them are in the oil and gas sector. Chemicals tends to be pretty good. There are very few chemical accidents, <coughs> here in the US anyway, compared to elsewhere. So the chemical industry is doing okay, but it's the oil and gas industry that, that is having more of, the, more of the accidents. And you could look at it as, a, as a, a means of, okay, are they cutting corners? Are they not following this? What's going on? So the whole purpose is that what we start off with is what risk is posed by our process and our operations. And how much do we want to reduce that to get to an acceptable level? So remember, there's no such thing as zero risk. There will be some risk left. But after we've gone through and done our analysis and put in our protective layers, we get down to what we consider to be a tolerable risk. There will, that will then leave some small amount of residual risk which should be within our tolerable boundaries. So how do we do that? Well, of course, well, the first thing we can look at is the process. What type of process is it? And again, the engineering. How do we engineer the process? How much volatile, explosive, toxic, corrosive material do we need to have stored on site to be able to meet our production needs? And then design, how we've designed the layout of the plant. Now, of course, for brownfield, and again, I'll use the term brownfield and greenfield, brownfield is an existing plant. And most of the plants in the US have been around for the last 40 years plus, some much, much longer than that. Greenfield, as it sounds, you take a green field and you're building a new plant. So with a green field, you have much more flexibility in terms of how you lay out the plant. So in other words, you can look at where, if you have to have office workers, where do the office workers need to be? Where does the building need to be relevant to or relative to where our hazardous process is going to be and how far is that away? Now, like I say, with brownfield sites, you, you, you're stuck with what you've got you might not be able to change anything. Uh, there was one plant uh, that had two huge boilers, and these were right next door to the canteen. So you imagine staff canteen at lunchtime, pretty busy. If those boilers went up, you'd have a major catastrophe on your hands. So if you can design your layout, that's very important. Then, of course, we have our basic process control system, our BPCS. This is our fundamental uh, layer of protection, as we call it, for making sure that the process is within normal operating parameters in terms of temperature, pressure, etc. So this should keep everything running correctly. Then we might have some process alarms that will enable the operators to intervene to be able to correct any deviation from the normal parameters. Then we might have some form of mechanical relief if there's a high pressure scenario, and that could be relief valves, it could be rupture discs, etc. And then we'll have a safety instrumented function potentially to get us to where we want to be. And you'll notice there it says optimal risk reduction ALARP. 
So ALARP is a very nice English term, it comes from the HSE in the UK, and it stands for as low as reasonably practicable. This is that lovely word, practicable. So ALARP, and we'll talk about ALARP in a couple of slides. So what we have to do is we have to measure our risk and our benefit. So we have to look at both of these to intelligently t determine what to do in, given any, in any given situation. So we can't just look at one of the two elements on their own. Because, for example, if we just focus on consequence, so we might have a very high consequence, plant explosion, multiple fatalities. But when we look at the likelihood, it might be very low. So we've got a very large consequence and a very low likelihood, so it may bring the whole thing down into an area that we don't need to put too much focus on. And what we'll see as we, we go through is that we can rank severities of the consequences and look at the, the likelihoods in terms of highest likelihood, lowest likelihood. So you can then look at the consequence and the likelihood together to determine, okay, what does that pose in terms of a, a potential risk, and then how do we address it? And when we get into talk about likelihood analysis, layer protection analysis, we'll, we'll talk about that a bit more. Because the reason I say if you just focus on consequence, consequence normally implies that there could be some form of harm. And harm can be defined, again, from a, per, a people point of view. Harm can be some form of fatality, of course, or it could be an injury which could be permanent or temporary, and there'll be degrees of that. So we need to understand all the significant forms of harm to properly consider the risk. If we don't do that, then we're not doing our job properly. So the expression of consequence, again, who is being exposed to this particular hazard? And of course it'll be the individuals, our plant personnel, and of course if we're in a populated area, then the local um, populace would be exposed, society in that case, and there might be some environmental. And then what's the nature of it? As I've said, it could be a fatality, it could be an injury, it could be temporary or permanent. And then there's some associated financial loss with that. So this is what we, we think about.